uh, uh, Nazionale. So it references the historical hero of the Philippines, the national hero, Jose Rizal, but also kind of tweaked it in kind of a drawing out the or mixing both the historical uh, hero but also the urban myth that surrounds Rizal. So it's a way for me of questioning how we construct those uh, national icons which informs the ideology of a nation, the uh, national narrative, if you like. Uh, so this work particularly started as a commission work. Uh, a friend of mine from uni, he is, uh, has a background in Philippine studies and was interested to um, uh, create a work because a lot of my work I kind of uh, follows that kind of questioning. Uh, the original proposal for uh, Allegori was a, a piano tower which includes this uh, wing. So it's a, this piano tower was previously uh, made, it's called Amparola, but also kind of a monument to uh, this patriotic uh, 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 symbols you know, of, of the Philippine nation, so it tells the story of the nation. Uh, it's also a deconstruction of for, for these narratives. Um, so for this particular work, uh, we couldn't do the actual large installation, so we use the this wing component. Um, the wing, uh, the, the portrait, you know, if you like, it's kind of a historical portrait of Rizal, as I said earlier, mixes with the urban myth that surround him. And uh, there's this myth that has been circulated, I, as far as I remember, I think when I was in uni, of uh, Rizal, who studied in Germany, he trained as an eye doctor. He uh, has some medical practice uh, that he's done. Uh, was traveling around Europe, and uh, at one point he was traveling to the town of Linz in Austria. And uh, of course, somehow the story went around, and uh, the, if you look at the narrative or the biography of uh, Adolf Hitler, his parents are from Linz. And around that historical time uh, timeline, Rizal was supposed to be in Linz when he allegedly met the uh, the mother of Rizal, who the mother uh, sorry the mother of Hitler. Uh, uh, the mom worked as a chambermaid in one of the hotels, and Rizal was traveling. So they they met, and then you know Adolf Hitler allegedly became the love child of both uh, you know uh, Hitler's mom and Rizal. But it's a very strange uh, connection because even in the history of the Philippines, uh, there was already strong cultural uh, links with Germany. Uh, one of the uh, sort of nations that was interested in that juncture of the uh, Philippine Revolution in 1898 was uh, the Americans coming in. But there was a flotilla of, uh, I think, German ships there was an active uh, uh, kind of a diplomatic a consul of Germany in Manila at the time. So had the Americans uh, came in that point of history, it could have been a part of the German, uh, the German colony. I think the Germany also had a colony in Papua New Guinea around the late uh, 1900s, oh, sorry, uh, 1800s. Uh, so this, this cultural links, I kind of quite interested in, in kind of drawing on how different different uh, sort of time, different points of history, which seems to kind of mix, you know, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, in terms of influence, but also even with the thematic of the, uh, the exhibition, which talks about the Malay identity. Um, Jose Rizal, when he was studying, was inspired by the German romanticists but also probably was familiar with the work of Johann Blumenbach, who was one of the pioneers who formulated the five races, which included the Malay race, the brown race. So you have the white race, you have the Malay race, you have the African, and, and two others. Um, so 
I think this was the, the mode of thinking, scientific thinking at the time, divided in five races. But of course, these are no longer current, you know, we, with, with DNA, uh, with, 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 with the new sciences, with DNA, we can actually trace ancestry of very different uh, heritage, you know, and, and the five races are not kind of very exact science. Uh, but that, that points out to that old thinking. So we find ourselves in a time uh, now with globalization where we have fake news, we have uh, an upsurge of nationalism, of fascist, fascism, and I kind of like to tease and make kind of uh, connections on, in, in a very kind of creative way. And, and try to point, uh, while, while the painting itself is a mixture of fact, history, and also made up stories, it kind of uh, grounds itself to the current, I think, uh, resurgence of nationalism, on how nationalism or the image of Rizal can be kind of uh, circumvented or twisted, uh, defining on the agenda of who controls it. In many ways, this is a reflection of uh, the current state of affairs in the Philippines, where we have a populist leader who kind of uh, was really got a big number of votes, but at the same time, you know, he he kind of retraces the the experience of military rule in the Philippines uh, during the Marcos time. Uh, last, I think, one of the motivation why I kind of really want to present this is uh, like uh, last year, same time last year when the, the government uh, allowed the burial of Marcos uh, in the, uh, with the national, with the heroes burial at the National Cemetery for Heroes. So for me, you, when you kind of look into the nation, I, I, it's useful for me to uh, allow this kind of deconstruction in the work. Uh, with, which work, which is also uh, located in, in a, it's a mixed media work located in the wing of a piano. Uh, the wing of the piano has a personal sort of connection with my own family story uh, because I, I work at a piano workshop and my dad was a piano maker. But I also re refer to the grand, the, you know, this is a grand piano, the, the grand narrative of, of nation, you know, the grand story. In many ways, these are all stories, you know, and, but the stories are kind of broken and fragmented, you know, with, within a nationalist, uh, ultra-nationalist, they want to, to fix the story. But of course, uh, popular culture is a way of also inserting itself. So I guess it's trying to make sense of, uh, you know, like the, the broken relationships of the narratives and the images that I, I like to think that art making can be a process of mending, you know, those uh, uh, the broken relationship of, of image and meaning, you know, and to make sense and hopefully to provoke uh, more questioning from, from audiences and, and, you know, and allow us to have discourse you know, on, on what's happening in, 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 in human society, you know. I think this, this uh, uh, thing that's happening in the Philippines is not only limited to uh, you know a specific uh, context, but I think it resonates uh, around the world. You know, we, we are living in very uh, interesting times, and I said you know the proliferation of fake news, or we, there's already a blurring of of what is real and what is not. You know? And I think we need to be actively critical, you know, in the way we. Uh, go with our daily lives, you know, and not just follow. You know, we, it's very important uh, so we can have a better, I guess, better society. You know, uh, we can be part as active citizens in in creating our community of nations. I mean, it's a bizarre claim to say that uh, you know the national hero was uh, the father of of this uh, dictator. You know that was. Uh, you know, committed so much damage, quite opposite. But I think with that kind of fantastical uh, sort of premise, you know, you, you, you get more conscious about history and, and more critical on 
how you process information and you know, uh, yeah. The work is also as, as, a, as a work on a grand piano a wing, it, it kind of a, a kind of frames itself as, as a work that's in flux, it's in constant movement, it's, it's very unstable. So either it's in flight or it's kind of a, you know, a falling from, from the sky. So, but that, that makes the work more, I think, more interesting uh, because it's not, uh, it's also going out, out of the convention of uh, traditional canvas painting where it's fixed on the wall in, in, in a kind of a frame. So it kind of, it's in flight, it's flight of fancy, but it's also carrying on its wings the kind of a, the, the, the social concerto, you know, the grand drama, it's, you know, in, in a musical sense. Uh, ironically, Jose Rizal, he was a, a kind of a universal man, he was a renaissance man, he was a polyglot, he uh, was a ophthalmologist, but he wrote two important novels which inspired the Philippine Revolution of 1896. Uh, but at the same time, he never delved into music. He was a bad singer. And you know, this is obvious because Filipinos, the common image of Filipinos, we like singing and you know. But Rizal wasn't, uh, he had no talent, I think, for singing. So it's also casting him in this new role. But he was uh, involved in the, in the narrative, in the building of the narrative, this, uh, concert of the nation. Mm -hmm.